everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be going over the latest and greatest Doctor Who news, including we're going to be dissecting the rumour of a Paul McGann spin-off. We are going to be talking about Russell D. Davis because he's just been going all out with comments following the Star Beast premiere that are really, really interesting. Future of the Daleks, for example. We're going to be going over the brand new announced documentary for Doctor Who Secrets and Scandals, as well as confirmed air dates for the specials and Nicola Colgan being officially confirmed via Russell T. Davis on Variety. I have so much news and I'm probably going to miss some stuff. Before we get into it though, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, it'd be very much appreciated. We are like 14 subscribers away from 22,000 and it would mean the world to me if we could get there today. That would be absolutely wonderful. But with that said, let's get right into the video. So as far as I can tell, this Paul McGann rumour began via The Mirror, through showbiz editor Mark Jeffries. So that's not the usual high-profile Doctor Who leaker they tend to have at The Mirror, that's Nicola Metvin. Mark Jeffries is the showbiz editor, and I believe he was the man who also wrote about Stephen Moffat making his return. So this was basically the first place that this was reported on, and here is the key quote that we're looking for. The spin-offs will work in the same way that Disney created series for Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe that stream on Disney+. Plus. A source said, Russell likes the idea of bringing back McGann with his own set of episodes in the TARDIS. Disney are on board as they want more original content and want to fully exploit the franchise as they know how big it can become. And then it goes on to talk about other potential spin-offs and saying that the BBC declined to comment. So that's where this came from. Granted, it's not from the traditional person who reports Doctor Who News, but the Mirror is still pretty reliable when it comes to Doctor Who stuff. And then a bunch of other places picked up this story, including Radio Times. So this went quite far. However, we hear today from someone who has some very well-placed contacts. He's pretty confident in saying that this is all speculation based on hopes and ideas. It isn't happening in my view, and I want it more than anyone. I'm not doing this for clicks or new followers. I'm just asking questions that as a fan, I want answered. And a lot of you will be aware that I'm lucky enough to know a few people who can give them. So yeah, it's looking unlikely from this, still not impossible, that we could see a Paul McGann spin-off. I mean, I feel like a Paul McGann spin-off is one of those things. It's the fandom-like wish, isn't it? More Paul McGann content is just something that everyone universally, no matter how old you are as a fan, are on board with, I feel. Like, I don't think there's anyone who would say no to more Paul McGann content. But at the same time, I don't want to say that it's happening and set unrealistic expectations if it's not. You know what I mean? And obviously with this, it's not being confirmed, despite some places I've seen saying it's confirmed, it's not confirmed, and it's looking less likely than I would like. I'd love this to be true. I saw a lot of people saying, how would you actually do this, you know, what with there being a main series and an 8th Doctor spin-off? I think it could work. It could fill the gaps when Doctor Who isn't on. I would give it its own sort of narrative to sort of distinguish it from the main series, but I definitely think it could work. RTD has had a bunch of comments released by different news outlets due to the fact that they were all in attendance for the Starbeast premiere, and obviously he was interviewed during the Starbeast premiere. RTD on the future of the Daleks. I think we've had a lot of Daleks lately. I think they've been done a lot. People are expecting them every year now. I think they need a good pause. Hopefully some new enemies can become new classics, but it's always good to move on. So yeah, this was a comment from Russell at the Starbeast premiere talking about the future of returning villains this particular quote came from the mirror. Personally, whilst I'm not against a Dalek pause, I do think we've seen quite a bit of them over the last few years. I mean, how Chibnall did a yearly Dalek special, not to mention the various episodes where they're there, but they're not the main focus, right? So you've got your Power of the Doctors, your Flux, etc. I'm not sure how much I believe this, because there was pretty strong speculation about the idea of a Series 14 Dalek finale, I suppose you could make the argument that that wouldn't be yearly because they wouldn't appear in, like, the 60th. Because there's no real reason for them to appear in the 60th other than, like, flashbacks, maybe. But I don't know how much I believe that they're going to be rested completely. On the other hand, though, I do find it interesting because this seemingly deconfirms the idea, or maybe confirms the idea, that the Cherry Nation estate have kind of relinquished some of their control over the Daleks. For those of you who don't know, there's kind of been this ongoing bit of speculation through the fan base for years and years and years that the Terry Nation estate makes it a requirement that the Daleks have to be in appearance at least once per year for Doctor Who series. So that's why you've got resolution at the end of series 11, right? They've got to, they've got to appear at least once per series was the ongoing piece of speculation. And that seems to have been debunked by this comment, which I'm happy to see. 
Although it has been said that I believe that Stephen Moffat's wife is actually in charge of Terra Nation's estate, so it could be that she was instrumental in loosening those restrictions. Honestly, who knows? But either way, I mean, I'm not against a Dalek pause, but again, I'll believe it when I see it. Russell C. Davis said that Doctor Who is not a children's show. This was via The Telegraph, and it was a paid segment, but I think someone's posted it online, which I appreciate, I think it's William Who. Doctor Who is not for children, despite generations of viewers being, being reared on the sci-fi show, Russell T. Davis has said. Davis acknowledged that children do watch the series. It is the first program he remembers watching, and said that the first of three 60th anniversary specials this year will be suitable for family viewing. But the subsequent two specials will be dark and weird, with frightening and sometimes violent scenes. All feature David making his return as the Doctor alongside Catherine Tate as Don Noble. We do very scary stuff. Some stuff is quite violent. It's not for children. It's about children, explained Davis as he rejoined the show after stepping down in 2009. Davis said that he has an eight-year-old self in mind when making episodes, explaining, It's not a children's show, but at the heart of it, is an eight-year-old watching, which I actually really like as an explanation for Doc Hugh. It's not a kid's show, but it's made in mind of children as well, which I think is a really good way of describing it. I find it really interesting him talking about how the Star Beast is, you know, more than suitable for children, which I think we all sort of expected. But the other two are darker, which I'm very interested to see. I'm not expecting, you know, like Torchwood levels or anything like that, or anything like Dark Water, you know, that one scene where they do the Don't Cremate Me and they got a bunch of complaints. I'm not expecting anything like that. But I am interested to see what's so dark that he says they're not necessarily for children the next two. Interesting stuff. He's also made comments on the 14th Doctor. This came from Daily Mail, but once again, William Who's helping us out. The mystery of his face does continue over Wobbly Yonder and the Giggle. It's not a huge plot, but it has a nice payoff, actually, so keep tuning in. There's not like a huge plot point with regards to the 14th Doctor's face, apparently, but it's a minor sort of plot point that has a nice payoff. And as William Who said there, that kind of reads in a similar way to what they did with the Twelfth Doctor and Caecilius. If you remember, they explained that the reason Capaldi's Doctor has the same face as Caecilius is not only because the actor played the character, but also because that face was a reminder to save people. He's also done descriptions of the episodes themselves. Star Beast is like a great big Pixar family film, like a bank holiday film, all the family watching, lots of laughter, funny monster. While Blue Yonder is darker, not scary, it's genuinely weird. The Giggle has NPH as a toy maker and is nuts, mad, frightening, and it will scare you. So interestingly, yeah, they've clarified it here again that these three specials are somewhat separate, which I'm totally fine with, but I'm really curious, what is so scary in episode two? Let me know your suggestions in the comments below. Another quote from LTD from the press screening, talking about the TARDIS set, the new TARDIS set, Davis said, I love that TARDIS. David loved it. David loved that set so much, he thought it would be absolutely brilliant to run around in it. Like that. After eight takes, not quite so fun. He was worn out by the end. So yeah, this kind of hints at, once again, the TARDIS's scale that we've kind of seen through several leaked images which, yeah, I'm super excited to see this TARDIS interior. And then finally, perhaps Russell T. Davis's most important quote of the evening, his comment on progressive casting. There are some journalists from newspapers of absolute hate, venom, destruction, and violence. You'd rather see that sort of thing wiped off the screen, destroyed. Shame on you. And good luck to you in your lonely lives. I absolutely agree with this. I think it's more than good to have more representation on screen. It really doesn't hurt anyone and I thank him for doing it. Channel 5 have released the details for the Secrets and Scandals Doctor Who documentary. This is something we've covered before. It's essentially a 90-minute doc covering various pieces of controversy surrounding Doctor Who's history, which will be airing, I believe, the same night as the Star Beast, but later. The show reveals the behind-the-scenes stories of how the show was created and has stayed so popular for so long. It features exclusive interviews with cast members, including Sophie Aldred, Nicola Bryan, and Fraser Hines alongside interviews with cast and crew, including the show's first director, Waris Hussein. The show exposes the stunts that went dangerously wrong and the secrets of how the crew brought the on-screen monsters to life. And there are revelations about how some monsters and storylines created for the series proved to be so scary the BBC were forced to re-edit episodes. There are also secrets about the scandalous treatment and behaviour of the show's main stars, and revelations about the surprising link between, between a teenage Peter Capaldi and the series long before he stepped into the main role. I feel like we know what that is, right? Like when he was the Doctor Appreciation Society. The show reveals the surprisingly sexy fan spin-offs produced when the show was off the air. Oh god, the Zygons thing. 
and how Doctor Who broke its own rules about sexual chemistry between the Doctor and assistants as the series went on. There are also revelations about missing episodes, and the programme also exposes the huge backlash after the BBC attempts to cancel the show, and how the reboot was nearly derailed. So yeah, it doesn't seem like anything too malicious. I'll be interested to give it a watch. I do find it very funny that they're the same day as the Star Beast at 8.30pm. I'll probably watch it though. And I know I think Billy Gout John of Review of Death worked on it, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Russell T. Davis also confirmed that Nicola Colgan will appear with Shuti Gatwa in a new Christmas special. Once again, this was at the Star Beast premiere. He said, when asked if he could reveal anyone who will be making a guest appearance in the next series, Davis teased an appearance by Colgan, but fans will have to wait about a year. Nicola Colgan at Christmas, not this Christmas, next Christmas, Davis said. We're shooting Xmas 2024 now. Known for her roles in Dairy Girls and Bridgerton, Colgan also starred alongside Gatwa in the mega successful Barbie movie earlier this year. While the audience snacked on popcorn from the TARDIS shaped boxes, Davis discussed the three specials starring David Tennant and Tate, the first of which premieres on November 25th, as well as hinted at Gatwa's introductory episode on December 25th. That Christmas Day episode is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous, Davis said. Adding of working with Gatwa, when you cast great actors, the pressure is to live up to them. It's to give them the stuff that they love, and also stuff that will push them every day. Teasing the next series of Doctor Who, Davis called the process of working with Gatwa and Millie Gibson, who plays companion Ruby Sunday, thrilling. What is coming up? Some of the stories we've never done before, the style of which we've never done before. We're doing brand new things on screen, Davis said. Again, you write this stuff because they're so good, and they meet the challenge every time. I am literally so excited to show it. So yeah, very cool stuff. I'm very excited to see all of it. And yeah, it's nice to have Nicola Colgan officially confirmed by Davis himself. They finally confirmed the air times for the Star Beast. It has been officially confirmed. This was first confirmed via the Radio Times, who heard it apparently via the BBC. That 6.30pm will be the broadcast time for the Star Beast with the supplementary show Doctor Who Unleashed airing at 7.30. We've had an absolute shed load of new images, including this one from, I assume, Wild Blue Yonder, where the TARDIS is smoking, as well as four HD images. I believe these herald from Doctor Who magazine originally, but then were reposted, I believe, by TV Zone initially and a few other places, like the Black Archive Gallery. Very, very cool pictures. This one in particular, I love. It's them all meeting, beep the beep, and the Doctor's sat there, and he has been sat there, and they're all sort of looking at him. And I love the set design of this place. It's very kind of, it just feels very homely and very earthy. And I love as well, there's a few things in particular I love. One, I love the way beep the beep looks. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. Very, very realistic. More practical than I was expecting. I was expecting more CGI, but it seems to be very practical. And you could also see as well, if you look very closely, we could see a shot of Donna's dad from One Away Bride, which is very cool. I love the little touches, man. It makes it feel so personal and so just well thought out. I'm, I'm really enjoying these little images. We've also got some pictures of Donna Noble heralding a taxi, as well as a second one, which is Sean Temple Noble driving a taxi. Presumably, this is the taxi that the 14th Doctor gets into. And we've got this shot of Yasmin Finney looking very serious in HD, and this shot of the Doctor and Yasmin presumably looking very confused by the spaceship, and then we see onlookers taking pictures of what is presumably the crash ship site. We also have this Who Spy image, which is from, I believe, the Toymaker's shop, the outside of it, which is, I believe, Joey the Clown. This is a mural of Joey the Clown, or like a, I guess, a, a street sign of Joey the Clown from the original Celestial Toymaker story. Just a very cool little tease here. And the caption read, we're just clowning now, which is a very funny caption, given that that's all Doctor Who fans do, is clown and think things are happening when they're not. It's, it's very funny. The Daleks colorization has officially had its physical release confirmed. It'll be released on February 12, 2024, via DVD, Blu-ray, and Steelbook, all for varying prices. We've also got some preview shots of the colorization, and I have to say it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this on the 23rd. And then we get to merchandise. There's been a Doctor Who Build-A-Bear announced, but for £66, which seems like quite a bit to me, but I am tempted by it, I will say. I'm not really a teddy bear guy, but this just looks really well done. For some reason, though, they've got a shoe and Sheila's version, and the shoe version doesn't have accurate shoes anyway, and they're the same price. So I'm not sure why you'd get the shoe version. We've also had a new range of Doctor Who cutouts, cardboard cutouts, including three brand new images of David Tennant's 14th Doctor, Donna Noble, and the TARDIS. Very, very cool to see merch 
getting very much underway now. And we've had a preview of next year's calendar, the 2024 calendar, which will feature various characters from across the 60s battle, including obviously the Doctor and Donna, the robot thing from Wildly Yonder, Beeps the Meep, the Toymaker, Wrath Warriors, very, very cool stuff. And finally, RTD confirmed via Doctor Who magazine that more colorizations were on the way following the Daleks one. So this could be a yearly tradition. We could be seeing a new colorization each year, which is hugely exciting. But that about wraps up everything I wanted to talk about today. Apologies, that there's not much editing to this video. This video is so long and there's so many news topics, I kind of just had to quickly get it out. But thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.